Hello everyone, welcome to another Ultimate Fire episode review. This is for Season 27, Episode 7, The Cookie Crumbles. Before I start this episode, I do want to apologise for a couple of things. First of all, the fact that I didn't review the most recent uh, UFC fight card to look at Fire the Night, because there wasn't a Fire the Night on the card, so I couldn't really review it. And the other thing is something I forgot to mention in the last episode of The Ultimate Fighter, which I'm going to bring up now because it ties in well to this episode, is even though Ricky Steele beat someone McTarion last week, he... Because of the way he fights, he throws really, really hard kicks. And uh, he his feet were very, very badly injured. And he gets a, and he has a concussion as well. And, you know, that's basically the first thing we learned in this episode. And I'm going to break this episode down into segments, because there was quite a lot that happened, and one thing that didn't happen. And I'm going to talk about that thing as well, but right, sort of right at the end. So, uh, yeah, Ricky Steele, you know, he came back in, he was on crutches. He, he assured the others that he'd be fine. They, everyone was starting to have doubts because Ricky hadn't actually seen a doctor yet after his fight. So, you know, when Team Cormier was ready to train, Cormier basically told Steele, look, you have to go and see a doctor. Like, if you're not feeling well, if, you, if your feet are still messed up, if your head's still, like, throbbing from the concussion, go see a doctor is necessary. So Ricky did just that. And his, uh, most of his cognitive functions were okay, but he, uh, you know, he was still in pretty, pretty bad shape and he was forced to sort of, like, not be in the competition anymore due to those injuries. Although, there was a nice moment earlier in the episode, uh, before Cormier told Steele to try go to a doctor, where Bryce Mitchell, who is easily my favourite, like, member of any of the teams there, made some really, really nice breakfast for Ricky, because Bryce is a true bro, and I want to meet him and have a drink with him, because he's just cool. But yeah, the, um, you know, it was a very, very nice moment, and even... Even with that, like, all the other fighters on Earth were sort of talking about how they doubt, you know, how they doubt that Ricky's going to make it. Even Luis Pena, who was the first person injured in the season, he, he had his doubts too. And I feel like Bryce Mitchell was the only one there just sat there minding his own business, not really talking. Okay, the others weren't really talking shit, but they, like, the fact that they had doubts about him, you know, it did, it did, it, that doesn't sit well with me. I, I can understand the point of view, I was just thinking, it's a bit early to count him out. You know, wait until everything's confirmed, and then everything was confirmed, and now Ricky really can't fight uh, for another week. He might return later in the season, we don't know. But yeah, Bryce Mitchell was just sort of minding his own business, so. Yeah, and after all that was said and done, Ricky basically got the confirmation that he couldn't fight anymore in the competition, so. Even though Cormier's team has more wins, it also has two fighters who are now on the shelf with Luis Pena and now Ricky Steele. And, uh. Then we get to the fighters of this episode, which were Alan Zuniga and Richie Smolin. Richie Smolin is the quietest guy in the house, possibly. He's from Ireland. He trains at... He does... I don't know... I don't remember if he trains at the same gym that McGregor does, but he has the same coach that McGregor does. And it's possible for the coaches to go to different gyms in, in MMA. So, yeah, he trains under him. And uh, also, Richie Smolin is the only person there who has a draw. So that's kind of interesting. And yeah, he hails from Ireland, he has a girlfriend and an adorable daughter named Ava, which is a nice name because my niece's name is Evie, so that's that just connects with me on some level. It's just kind of adorable. And uh, then we have Alonso Nika's life. He lives with his mom, his brother, and a niece of theirs. And he also has a lot of exotic uh, pets. He has snakes, he has turtles, especially caimans. He has caiman... I said especially caimans, like... There's no such thing as a caiman turtle. A caiman is a type of alligator. But yeah, you know, he has, like, really, really nice uh, exotic animals. He looks after them. And he goes... Uh, and he lives by a river. So, you yeah, know, he's got another supply of water. Yeah, because he's from Costa Rica. And there was even a, a cool moment where, like, Steve Emich spoke a bit of Spanish. I, I can only assume it is to Zuniga, but it wasn't as good as... Someone else on the on Miocic's coaching staff who I'm gonna have to look at really quickly. Uh, huh. I thought there was someone there. Also, it's weird that part of the coaching. It's also weird that Alan, who was fighting in this episode, is part of the coaching staff. And uh, there's really not a lot else to talk about. You know, there was just sad moments and such. And then we get to the fight itself between Alan Zuniga from Team Miocic and Richie Smolin from Team Cormier. And who won? Alan Zuniga. But not really. 
So what happened was, like, they had a weigh-in, and, you know, they had a pretty intense stare-down. I mean, Alan zaniga has got a really, really neat stare for the stare-down. And they both made weight. The problem was, Richie Smallin didn't really have to cut any weight. Like, he was around that level anyway, so he was completely fine. But, because of that, he... Uh, like, during the warm-up to actually go and fight, his calves locked up, and his stomach started feeling bad, and he was just really, really sick, basically. He didn't throw up or anything, he just needed to sleep. It was primarily nerves. And the, you know, they got doctors in to sort of check it out, and they tried to smooth out his legs and, you know, tried to calm him down. And uh, Smolin just couldn't really go on. And then what even came to, like, you know... He basically said to Team Miocic, if Smolin isn't recovered within that time, then Zuniga wins. And Zuniga got the win. But, no. No, he... Uh, mm. I don't like this. I really don't like it when that happens. I feel like this is a rarity. While it's not uncommon for fighters to get sick in the Ultimate Fighter, and to be forced to miss a fight, they've usually been replaced, but this was completely cancelled. And Zuniga sort of got the win because Richie Smolin couldn't continue because the doctors recommended that he doesn't, and there was a very small choice by them. Because I want to actually see Richie Smolin fight. He's called the Silent Killer, and I want to see how how he kills people. Not literally, that'd be weird. But yeah, it was just a really shitty situation for Richie Smolin, who was forced out of the fight for Alan Zuniga, who didn't really get to fight. Even though he's been training for Smolin for like you know all this time, he didn't really get to have a chance against him. And it's a double shame for me because there was earlier points in the episode where, you know, where Sumo Mokhtarian, Ricky Steele, and uh, Brad Katona, who'd sort of all trained with uh, with Smolin, knew how good he was, and Mokhtarian has been caught up in a leg lock by Smolin, and that's Smolin's bread and butter. He's a mean leg lock guy. I mean, we see that in his video package where he's fighting. He's got nasty heel hooks and, like, leg locks and such. And it really sucks that we didn't get to see that, and we didn't really get to see a fight at all. So... Yeah, I mean, it was a really good episode, and there was a lot of emotion, but now Cormier is three men down. Team Cormier is three men down, because at the end of the episode, um, forgot his name already, sorry, Smullen was in the van on the way to the hospital, so I can only hope that he goes there and gets better. But man, it really fucking sucks. I mean, and also my cat's sleeping. But yeah, it's, it's a really, really bad situation. I mean... We don't fully know that Smolin is completely out. I mean, you know, Ricky Steele is injured to the point where he can't go on. Luis Pena is injured to the point where he can't go on. And it could work. It could happen for Smolin as well. Sorry, that's you on. But, yeah, it's... I, I've repeated this a few times, so it's a bad situation. And it, it's never really good for fires when it does happen. It, it's just... A really, really bad thing, and I feel terrible for Team Cormier, because he's been winning most of the season, but three he could well lose three of his fighters now, because two are already like, off off the market, basically. They can't fight anymore because they're too injured. So, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, the only thing I know is that the last fight we have is Brad Katona. Not Brad Katona, he already fought, sorry. Tyler Diamond uh, from Team Cormier against Delaney Perry from Team Miocic. And uh, I'm going to quickly look this up because I keep forgetting to. Uh, there's probably going to be another UFC event on this weekend. The weird thing is, though, I tried to call for the night last time. Ah, yes, there is. Let's see. Uh, ooh, Jimmy Rare versus Marlon Marish. Let's see. I always, I'm going to do this each time. I'm going to try and figure out which could win for the night. Oh, that will be good. Oh, man. There is two candidates here. I'm going to call them both out for the night. We have Nick Lance against David Tamer on the prelim card, and David Tamer is freaking amazing as is Nick Lance. Or, uh, there's three possibilities. I'm going to throw all of them out. There, there's that first one, Nick Lance versus David Tamer. There's Jake Ellenberger versus... Jake Ellenberger, sorry, versus Ben Saunders. That could be really good. And John Volante versus Sam Alvey. Any of those three could win it. But I'm going to try and be a dental one. I'm going to pick Nick Lentz and David Tamer, obvious choice, because Nick Lentz is a fight of the night magnet, and David Tamer is underrated and amazing. So, yeah, with that said, that's the last of this Ultimate Fighter episode review. Ultimately a good episode. 
even though we didn't actually get a fight because of what happened. And Cormier's team has taken some serious blows because of it, but I hope that they're okay for him. You know, I mean, the number one pick is in the next fight. I mean, the number one pick overall, too. So, yeah. And I'll see you all on June the 2nd for the Ultimate Fighter Fight of the Night review. Not the Ultimate Fighter, the UFC Fight of the Night review. For Rivera vs. Morich. So, I don't have a lot else to say. I think I've wasted enough of your time. So, thank you for listening. You're awesome. Bye-bye.